Okay, this is the notes for Section 3.7 Graphs of Sequences. If you haven't done so already, make sure you uh, read Section 3.7 before going on with these notes. Um, first of all, sequences can be expressed explicitly, something like this, a sub n equals 2n plus 5, or recursively, like we talked about in the last section, a sub 1 is equal to 7, a sub n is equal to the previous term, a sub n minus 1, plus 5. Okay. To graph a, the sequence, plot ordered pairs n a sub n. So if you think about a sequence, the x value is always the term number, and the y value will always be the value of that sequence. So for instance, in this term, or in this sequence here, when n is 1, a sub 1 is equal to 7. So the ordered pair 1, 7 would be plotted when we graph that particular sequence. Okay? The ordered pairs can be generated explicitly, recursively, or through words. Any one of those works. Okay? Okay, let's take a look at example one here. It says, suppose you add 22 stones to a pile every night. How many stones are in the pile after the nth night? Key key condition here is after the nth night. So the first time we're going to look at it is after the first night and then after the second night, etc. Okay, so the first term is after one night of putting the 22 stones on the, the pile. So we'll start with 22 stones and then each night we're going to be adding 22 stones to that pile. So after six nights we'll have 132 stones on that. Okay. So all of these are ordered pairs that we can graph. Now if we go ahead and graph those, okay, it's going to look like this. Okay. And you can divide that up, you know, kind of in a lot of different ways, but we're going to graph each one of those points. Notice how I'm not connecting those points with sequences. Remember, we have a discrete domain, so they're just the individual points when we graph them. Okay, let's look at example two here. It says, use the explicit formula of L sub n equals 97 minus 23n. First of all, graph the first six terms of the sequence. Well, once again, when we're going to graph that, they're going to be, uh, ex they're going to be discrete points. So when I graph that, it's going to look like this. So we have 174, 251, etc., all the way down to the sixth term being 5. Uh, negative, or excuse me, the fifth term being 5, uh, negative 80, 18, okay? Um, if, if I look at part B then, it says, let uh, graph L sub n, L, um, L of n equals 97 minus 23n using a domain of all reals. So basically we're going to graph this sequence, but over a continuous domain instead of a discrete domain. And you'll notice that it looks exactly the same. It's just that all of the points are going to be included on that. So every point that's over here would be on this line. Okay? And then it says finally to compare and contrast those graphs. Well, if I, if I do that, both of the graphs are going to have that constant change of negative 23. If I were to, to plot a point here, at 0, it would also be at 97, the same as over here. Okay? Uh, the main difference, though, is that this line is continuous, whereas this line over here is a discrete graph. Finally, let's take a look at example 3. It says, a mathematician proposes a sequence to study properties of multiplication. Let s sub n be the nth term. The first two terms are 2 and 3. Beginning with the third term, each term is found by multiplying the two previous terms together. Part A just says write a recursive formula for the sequence. So if we're going to write a recursive formula, most of the, the, the recursive definitions or formulas that we've looked at, we've only had two statements, what the first term is and then how to cr calculate um, uh, the next terms using the previous term. Well, in this particular one, I don't have just the first term. They gave me the first two terms, and then I need to 
the two previous terms to get the third and subsequent terms. So the way I'm going to do that is the following. I'm going to write down a statement for the first term, s sub 1 is equal to 2. A statement for the second term, s sub 2 is equal to 3. And then if I'm going to find the nth term, I'm going to take s sub n minus 1 times s sub n minus 2 for n greater than or equal to 3. So if I'm finding the third term when n is 3, I'm going to take the, or the, excuse me, the second term times the first term. If I'm finding the, say, the tenth term, I'm going to take the ninth term times the eighth term. So I'm always taking the two previous terms and multiplying them together to get the, the next term. Okay? So the last thing here, part B says, graph the first six terms of the sequence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually leave that to you. We'll talk about that one a little bit in class. But see if you can come up with that graph. And I think what, what you want to do to do that first is come up with those first six terms, those ordered pairs, and then, then look at graphing it. You're going to find that, that um, as, as you get out towards six, that number is going to get very large fairly quickly. Thank you.